Today I'm going to talk about making biltong from corned beef. Now normally you'd make it from fresh meat like silver side or top side uh, but I'm going to show you a method that I've worked out to make it from corned beef. Now the reason I'm making it from corned beef is because corned beef is a hang of a lot cheaper than fresh beef in this part of the world. For the keto people it's going to be uh, very good for keto even though there's a little bit of sugar and some preservatives in corned beef it's going to still be a keto option because the uh, grams of carbohydrate in corned beef are less than one per hundred grams of corned beef so it's virtually nothing and um, for those of you who like jerky it's probably going to be a bit more to your taste because there is a bit of sugar in corned beef so let's have a look um, this is just a lump of corned beef that I've got from the supermarket just get the packaging off now when it comes out of the packaging it's a little bit slimy from the preservatives and whatever they put on it so I normally just give it a little rinse under the, the tap Get all that stuff off. And then um, if you take a look at the meat, you might see some areas where there's a bit of sinew or something like that. It's always a good idea to cut those off because it makes your bulldog much easier to chew. Right, that's off there now. And then I always choose a piece that's got a nice bit of fat on it because I like a bit of fat with my biltong. And then you slice it. I slice them about 15 to 20 mils thick. Uh, depends how uh, wet you like your biltong. If you like your biltong very wet, then slice them a bit thicker. But uh, I like to eat my biltong quite quickly. So that's about the thickness that I would slice them at. Right, there we go. There's our getting six pieces out of this one. And then uh, the next step is you'll need a, a plastic or glass tub because you're going to be using a bit of vinegar. I'll just put them in there. Toss a bit of vinegar on. roll them in the vinegar. The vinegar is there to uh, just help uh, create an acid surface to the biltong uh, which inhibits fungal growth. And those who know biltong you often get that white mold growing on biltong and that uh, the vinegar is supposed to help because it uh, lowers the pH on the surface of the biltong. So that's basically all we need to do with that, with the vinegar. Then we just chuck it off and put that aside for a moment. Now we're going to get on to the spice, and this is I've had to ex I've had to experiment with this spice a little bit uh, because of the salt in the uh, corned beef. So I've had to lower the salt, so, um, and I've added a few other spices to my original recipe, which some of you may remember from a few years ago. Right. First thing I'm going to put in is a teaspoon of onion powder. Don't use onion salt, because that'll make it too salty. Then we're going to use about a hundred 
mils of whole coriander corn. And then about 50 mils of paprika. I also use a bit of ground coriander as well because the whole corns, if you just use them, it gets quite uh, fibrous on the outside. So a bit of whole just to add a bit more coriander flavor. And then the last thing is a little bit of pepper. Just be careful with pepper because uh, these are whole peppercorns. Uh, about a teaspoon, I suppose, because they're quite hot because they're not being cooked. And then, sorry, I said that was the last thing. It's not the last thing. The last thing is a bit of coarse salt. Now the coarse salt, because there's salt in the corned beef, I, I've been experimenting with this and I found about a teaspoon of coarse salt's about right. If you don't have any salt, it just tastes a little bit short on salt. Um, so I've added a tiny bit of salt just to make up for that. And then the next step is just to blitz this all together. Oh, that's looking quite good now smells very nice the fresh coriander that's why I always use coriander um, seeds because the ground coriander has lost a lot of its aroma already so the seeds give you that lovely smell when you when it comes when you freshly grind them right then our next step is just a little bit of vinegar I'm going to chuck off Our next step is to layer them so that we can spice them. And you can sprinkle this quite liberally. And then just because that's the bottom layer, I just flick them over. And th this spice, if you make too much like I've done here, you can uh, just put it in a Ziploc and put it in the freezer because if you don't put it in the freezer, it eventually loses that lovely fresh coriander smell. So the freezer manages to stop it losing its aroma. And then the last two pieces we'll just cover Right, that's it. Now we put this in the refrigerator for about three hours. Then I come back and we'll put the clips on. I just use paper clips to hang them and I'll just show you what I do with the paper clip. Straighten the paper clip and then just open the two ends a little bit. And then I twist the one end so that it's at 90 degrees because when you hang it on the stick, you don't want them to hang parallel to the stick. You want them to hang at 90 degrees to the stick. So that's why I put that little twist in there. And so we'll come back in about three hours and hang them up. And then they'll probably take about, probably take about uh, one and a half to two days before we're eating bultong. So it's pretty quick. And I'll show you the little bultong cabinet that I've recently acquired as well. Right, I just wanted to let you know that about five or six years ago we did a, a biltong video and I took you through traditional biltong making right from the beginning to the end, including uh, making a very cost-effective cabinet. So if you want to look at that old video, it's still up there and all you need to do is click on this link here. Right, this has been in the fridge for about three hours now 
Our next task is just to put our little wire clips through, get them ready for hanging. Right, and then we'll take it over to the curing box and it's just a matter of hanging them up and now you can see why I bent the clips at 90 degrees because if you don't then uh, it ends up that they start touching each other and you don't want them to touch each other so that's why I did that and, uh, this little drying box I've got is much more user friendly than the old cardboard box that I did in the last video. Let me just put the lid on. You can see it's got a little fan. It's like a computer fan and a 40 watt incandescent bulb to give a bit of heat. So we'll just get that in there. Switch it on. And away we go. This Right, that's that process up to then. Then I'll leave it a day and a half and uh, we'll come back together again and I'll show you what it looks like in the final stage. Right, this has been going about one and three quarter days now and I'm really looking forward to trying it. So let's do it. Just gonna look for a piece that's, that's a nice piece. Some of them are still a bit wet, so I might leave it going about another few hours. But let's take this one and go, and, or these two, and go and cut and see what they look like. This one looks okay. I'm just going to slice through. So we can see what it looks like. That's looking not too bad. Let's try a piece. Mm. It's good. It could probably have had a little bit more salt. So I put a teaspoon in, but maybe a bit more. But otherwise, it's got a nice flavour. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and share it and uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And if you have any comments, please scroll down right down below the video. You'll find the comment section and leave me a message there. And if you'd like to be notified the next time we do a video, um, if you click the bell next to the subscribe button, you'll get notification. Thanks very much for watching.